In this video, we're going to learn about data representation in tables for your practicals. So there are about eight examples here, and it covers almost all the various kind of instrument that will be needed and how you record in your table. And for each example, I will just put the diagram there. Uh, not to worry that you do not know the details of the practical. This just to give you a, bit, uh, a slight idea how the practical looks like. And we will just focus on how do you record the data in the table in order not to lose any marks. Now let's start with the first example here, which is an electricity setup here. Once it's set up uh, and the instruction tells you that you're supposed to place the slider on the mounted resistor wire such that the current here is the lowest. That means to say my resistance for the whole circuit should be the maximum. So this slider, you're free to clip on any part of the mounted wire. Okay, so and as you know that only if you connect the slider to the extreme right hand side here, so the current have to pass through all this resistance wire and then go back. So that will be the max, uh, maximum resistance, lowest current. So that will be the first setting that you need to do. And you can set your independent variables in this case, which is your I. So I is your independent variable, very important, and it will always appear on the left most column of the table. All right. Independent means to say you set the values yourself. Some call it the change variable. You set it yourself. For, so for this case, okay, I will, the current is the lowest, which is 0 0.12. Okay, so what you can do is because for the, how about the rest of the independent variables, you have to decide on your own and the interval has to be equally spaced out. So what you can do is to put the slider on the other extreme end here so that the current is the maximum from then on you can actually space out the spacing uh, so that you have a equally spaced out current value so what i'm going to do is uh, i will have an interval of 0 0.02 so this will be 0 0.14 0 0.16 1 8 0 0.21 0 0.23 now of course the interval is not always the same but i have to more or less make sure the intervals are about the same so that later when you draw your graph the points will be spread apart evenly now another thing to take note of is your readings here independent has to be either ascending or descending it cannot be the case where you put for example here 0 0.23 and then you realize that oh uh, i shot one point then you go and put 0 0.21 on the last one here if that's the case uh, marks will be deducted now subsequent columns here will be your dependent variable that means to say the value here in this case is the voltmeter reading whatever reading it is depends on the independent variable the i that you set so if i do the experiment by putting the slider at different position following the current that i set i will get roughly this value 1.30 1.00 0 0.60 0 0.35 Alright, the next thing you need to take note of is how many decimal place that I need to put there. Now, all depends on the position of the instrument that you are using. As you know, the ammeter and voltmeter, the precision is two decimal place. So that means to say you definitely have to put two de decimal place here. For example, if you were to put 1.5 or 0 0.6 over here, marks will be deducted because this two reading here is considered one decimal place. Next, let's talk about the table itself. If the table is not given to you, you are supposed to draw out the table correctly. Okay, in this vertical format by default using rulers and your pencil. Next, the important thing is the header. All right, you realize that the header here will followed by the fiscal quantity slash followed by the units of the fiscal quantity. Okay, so this is the present uh, presentation that you need to write. So the units will be put in the header. That's why in the body of the table here, when you write down your data here, you should not have the units written here. Once, for example, if you just accidentally put a ampere here, marks will be deducted. All right, so do take note of that. Once the table is done, you can proceed to plotting of the graph. If the 
question tells you tells you that plot v against i okay that means to say similar to your math plot y against x so your v has to be on the vertical axis followed by your i on the horizontal axis so basically you just how do you label the axis you follow the header so if you want to know more there will be another video on this on the plotting of graph in this second example you have a setup like this and it's similar to a pendulum but instead you're given a rigid wooden rod here and there are six holes that's drilled into the drill through the rod and you're going to pivot the rod at different holes so and then you set it in oscillation and you're supposed to do for 10 oscillations and the instrument needed for this experiment is your basically your stopwatch that's provided and of course you know that the precision of the stopwatch is two decimal place so 0 0.01 seconds so you have to record it to two decimal place by default and because there are length involved so basically you'll be using a 50 cm ruler or a meter rule and you know that the precision of a ruler is 0 0.1 cm or rather the smallest division which is 1 mm so which is the same as 0 0.1 cm and all these are in cm Another thing to take note of is the symbols used in the practical here. For example, this is a capital L, that's the length of the whole wooden rod, where this small L here is the distance measured from this line that's drawn on the wooden rod all the way to the respective holes. And it's stated that you have to measure the top end of the hole. Okay, so do the same, be consistent for all the measurements for the small L. Now let's start with the first column, your independent variable, that's the length small l for each respective holes and then you just record down to the precision of the ruler, 0.1 of the cm. So if this first reading is 24 exactly, you still have to put there 24.0. So I'll just continue on to record down the rest. Now the next column which is your dependent variable and you have to measure the time t for the 10 oscillation. Now let's, uh, let me highlight something to you. Some students actually thought that this t here, capital T, is actually the period which they are used to in the theory. But uh, yes, but the thing is the t here, if you follow the instruction, this capital T here represents the time taken for the 10 oscillation. Do follow the instructions. If not, all the, the experiment will be wrong and nothing is being mentioned so you follow the precision of your digital stopwatch so you record down as two decimal place so if this is 11.19 or if this is 11.20 you still have to put the 20 behind to make it two decimal place so let's continue with the rest here the next column here is your t square so the t capital t is referring to this t so basically you just square it so now I th there's one thing I want to highlight is student tends to make mistake on this is t square versus t2. So one is a superscript, one is a subscript. So there is a difference. So this is basically your square. So it's 11.59 times 11.59. So you will get 134.3. So you basically square it. If the two is at the bottom here, which is a subscript, that means to say usually they will ask you to do the experiment t once there's a first column then repeat the experiment the same experiment where the length is the same okay for the same length then there's your t2 so usually this is used to represent repeating the experiment first time second time so on and so forth where the superscript here is the square so it can be t cube also and there's no need for you to know why must it be square not cube or whatever just follow the instruction carefully and you continue to record down the value and of course from the instructions here it's given that your t square has to be recorded to 0 0.1 second square one decimal place so make sure that it's one decimal place and for the next column l square is referring to this l you basically square it so and read the instruction carefully you're supposed to record it to the nearest whole number so in this case this will be 581 and for the last column here okay is t squared times your l now of course one careless mistake by student is 
sometimes they will just oh it's just taking this times this column these two yeah, okay if they are not mindful and that will be totally wrong so it's t square times the l so it's these two column and likewise to the nearest whole number so you'll get a very big number over here but not to worry just continue on to fill up the rest once the table is done okay do spend some time to check make sure there are no units inside the table and follow them be consistent in your reading like one decimal place here whole number over here so once it's done you can proceed to your plotting of graph in this third example okay you is optics converging lens experiment so you set up the operators as shown here and for the independent variable is given to you already that's your d so refer to the diagram is the distance of the screen from the cross wire here which is a torch light typically it's a torch light in your experiment so start with 90 and so you start with moving the lens from the cross wire and slowly to the right until you get a sharp image on the screen so that distance from the cross wire to the center of the lens that will be your ua so that's here you record it down and the value here let's say is 19.5 then how about your ua2 what does it mean remember i said before this means that it's not a square whatever it means to repeat the experiment again okay where the distance is still 90 so most probably you'll get the same answer or if it's different it should be just slightly uh, different cannot be too much of a difference so next from the instruction they tell you to move continue to move the screen to the right until at this position where there's a sh another sharp image form on the screen okay so likewise the distance ub is from the cross wire all the way to the lens when there's a sharp image here so there's ub1 and ub2 because you repeat the experiment again so in this case let's say i just put here 70.0 69.9 so as you know this experiment the instrument will be ruler okay so it's 0 0.1 cm so all this has to be one decimal place so be mindful of that so if it's 70 you still have to put 0 0.0 so once you get the raw data for the uh, distant d90 you proceed to 85 where the screen is 85 cm from the cross wire and you do get the remaining raw data before you come to the calculated values after you have done with ua and ub next we go to the ua average and ub average so following the instruction is more important they told you that the ua average and ub average should be to the nearest 0 0.1 cm so it's similar and you just take your calculator add both together and divide it by 2 you get 19.7 and 70.0 respectively okay once that's done we will look at the next two column which is your ua average and ub average so they are the same actually but you have to be mindful the difference is the units so you have to convert cm to meters basically just divide by 100 so you just jump to the left two times so it will be 0 0.197 so do you need to round off like say pay attention to the instruction here so in meters is three decimal place so you leave it as it is and for ub average in meters you get 0 0.700 lastly the last two column is one over ua average in meters so the one over literally means take one divided by the ua average uh, of a so just take out a calculator and press in the value and the answer should be two decimal place so 5.08 and 1.43 respectively and then you continue to finish up the rest once that's done okay do a double check okay make sure there are no units inside and consistency um, for this case make sure it's one decimal place you must put the zero over here and everything's good likewise you can proceed to your graph in the fourth example here you have a simple pendulum here but the only thing different is there's a clamp here so the oscillation will be blocked 
over this side as it swings. So be very mindful where is your X and where is your L and where is your capital L. So all this you have to be mindful in order not to do the experiment wrongly. So in this experiment you need a meter rule so the precision is 0.1 cm and you of course you have a digital stopwatch where the precision is two decimal place 0.01 of a second so if it's not unless otherwise stated by the instructions if not you shall leave the precision as such so this question uh experiment a bit different because the independent you are free to choose from this range so it's up to you so for example this one is 39 i prefer to start with 39.0 32.0 27.0, 21.0, 15.0, Okay, so I prefer to put it these values is up to you as long as it's within the range. Alright, next column and from the instruction you are supposed to measure L starting with let's say you measure is 50.0 cm. Alright, and what you need to do is take the capital L which is a constant 50.0 minus the way the L that you have chosen here. So in this case, this will be 11.0, 18.0, and so on and so forth. Next column, we have the square root of x. That's why the units will be cm to the power of half. Okay, that means square root. So just take a calculator. And for this, how many is uh how many decimal place should you leave? Is it should, okay? As you can see here, it's given in the instructions. All right. So this will be 3.3, 4.2. 4.8, 5.4, 5.9, and 6.3. Next, you're supposed to swing the pendulum for and record the time for 10 oscillations following the instructions. And stopwatch, okay, it's two decimal place. So you just by default stick to the position of the stopwatch. And this T2 here, not to square it, but rather to repeat the experiment again, and it's 10.47. So it should be quite close, okay? If this, for example, the first one is 10.44, and the other one happens to be, let's say, 12 point something seconds, so you better repeat the experiment again. Now, one thing to highlight is um, it might be advisable because of human reaction time, and you're just taking 10 oscillations, so because of human reaction time, there are some um, may ask you, the instruction may ask you to leave it in one decimal place. Or if they did not mention, I mean, if you want to put a two decimal place, it should be all right. Make sure it's consistent, all are two decimal place. Or if you choose to, because of human reaction time, you choose to put in one decimal place, it's fine also. It wouldn't, I, in general, it wouldn't be penalized. Make sure consistency. And then the T average will just follow. Okay, so you sum up both T1 and T T2 divided by 2, that's why you get 10.46 and you continue to fill up the rest. Once the table is done, you can proceed to the graph. In this fifth example, we have a thermal and the instrument involved will be a thermometer and you know that the precision of a thermometer is 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. And another thing to take note of is the bar of the thermometer should not be touching the container or rub against the container. So in general, uh, you're supposed to pour a quantity of water into the styrofoam cup and then you just stir it a little bit and at time equals to zero, okay, and you just record the temperature, let's say it's 26.5, you just record it to one decimal place and then at the end of every interval, one minute, two minute, three minute respectively, you just record the temperature and because nothing is added, there's a chemical to be added, nothing is added yet, so the temperature should remain constant. And at four minutes here, you're supposed to add a substance P into the liquid and then continue to stir, but do not record only when the timing. So the stopwatch continues to run, so you have to be very mindful. So just before 4.5 minutes, you have to pay attention to the reading of the thermometer. So you continue to record down and make sure it's to one decimal place. So once that's done, do not worry so much about the, the reading, the accuracy of the reading, but rather how you record the reading 
to one decimal place for the thermometer and then you proceed on to the graph. This six example here is a bit unique. It's a, have involving a burette here where first of all you have to set up the flow rate of the water by adjusting the tap here such that when time equals to zero and it takes about between 15 to 20 seconds for the water to drop to 10 cm cube here. Okay, so once that flow rate is okay, you do not adjust the tab. Okay, not, not to worry so much of the, the setup because you do not have the instructions here. After that flow rate is determined, so basically you will be referring to the height of water using the ruler here. And the height of the ruler H here will be your independent, uh, uh, independent variable. So starting with 50 and the last one will be 5. All right. And the in-between is blank, as you can see here. So you're supposed to fill it up yourself, the independent variable. And as mentioned, it has to be more or less of equal interval. You do not want the case where this is 50, this is 48, 46, 44, so and so forth. And lastly, straight away jump to five. Then your graph will be a bit weird. So let's put in the value. Let's say this 40. 30, 25, 20, 15, and 10. Now you might be wondering if this use, this is a ruler here and as mentioned, the precision of the ruler is 0.1 cm. Yes, correct. But for this case, since it's given to you 50, they did not put 0 0.0. So basically it's okay, just be consistent, follow their format. So it's a one shot thing. Once the, the water level reach to 50 so you it's a continuous the time stopwatch never stop and then you just record the timing when you reach 40 30 so and so forth so and because you understand the nature of this experiment is very uh, not accurate so that's why in the instruction they told you to record the digital stopwatch to the nearest second so this is what I meant by you know in your theory the position of the digital stopwatch is two decimal place but since the instructions tell you to record to the nearest second you have to do that so the when it falls to 50 so that's your where you start your stopwatch so this is let's say 22 46 then this one is 60 75 92 136 so and so forth so when this is done just plot the graph in this seven example here, you have an electric circuit, ammeter, voltmeter, and you know that the precision is two decimal place, and you're going to measure the distance x. Basically, this is a wire that's on the cardboard, and be mindful where you measure the x from. And in this case, it's 40 cm. You put your the uh, crocodile clip to this side, or this part of the crocodile clip where this is 40 cm. Alright, so you record down, remember it's two decimal uh two decimal place, 0 0.38, 0. let's say 38, and then you continue to fill up the rest. So just in case you're wondering how about the V, so in this experiment, uh, because you don't see the, the steps here, so you basically ad adjust the variable resistor such that the V is, is still remains constant. So that's how you get it. Then next, the next column, the calculated value, you're supposed to find the average. So you can just add both together, divided by two. So you'll still be two decimal place. So 0 0.38, and we shall continue to fill up the rest. For the last column is one over IA from here. And because one is a constant and you divide by IA by right, I mean, the general rule is to follow the same sig fig as the raw data so it's two sig fig but because the instruction is given here is two decimal place already so we shall follow that so this will be 2 .6, 3, 2 3.63 2.86 3.23 3.45 3.70 so likewise remember the 0 and 4.00 okay two decimal place so one this is done proceed to the graph. In this last example, this is a uh, optics, the glass block with the pin and bending of light refraction. So the instrument that you need to do to use is your ruler, which is precision 0.1 cm and your protractor. 
now so this will the precision is to one degree all right so for here you follow the instructions draw trace this out on the a4 size paper given and the independent variable will be here so 0 20 30 40 all the way to 55 so that's the angle i that is shown here so perform the experiment and you will get the respective value for x like let's say 0 0.9 1.4 2.4 3.9 5.3 just in case you're wondering about the where's X actually. So there's a bending of light, the light will emerge out here. So this is the distant X that you're supposed to measure. So once the dependent variable is done, so you can proceed to the graph. So I hope this video helps to, to give you a better idea how do you record your data in the table in order not to lose any marks. Okay, thank you.